Hello again, and welcome to another video in the WebLogic Server 1221 video series. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how the new Elastic Scalability feature works with dynamic clusters to help you scale up a cluster and then scale down the cluster. As part of this video, I'll demonstrate how to go about creating a new dynamic cluster using the WebLogic Administration Console. And then in the first part of this series, I'm going to show you how to manually scale up the cluster capacity. So in this instance, I'm going to be using WST, the WebLogic scripting tool, to execute an operation to scale up the cluster. We'll then look at the outcome of that via the WebLogic console. And then I'll follow that up with an operation that will scale the cluster back down to effectively reduce capacity and show the results of that operation via the WebLogic administration console again. With that, let's get started. To begin the demo, I've opened up the WebLogic Administration Console pointing to a local administration server. This is essentially an empty domain at this point other than a machine has been configured to enable the administration server to start and stop the managed server instances. The first thing I need to do is create a new dynamic cluster. So we step through the various steps in the wizard. I choose dynamic cluster. We'll give it a name, we'll call it Elastic Cluster. We'll accept the defaults for the ports. On the next page, I can specify some of the dynamic server properties. In this case, I can specify the initial um, number of servers that are associated with this dynamic cluster. In this case, it's two. I can also specify the maximum number of servers that can be created. Additionally, I can also specify a server name prefix to use to help identify the managed servers that are dynamically created for this Elastic Cluster. We'll just accept the defaults there. I'll enable it to use any machine configured in this domain, and as we have multiple physical pieces of hardware, each with machines, this enables the dynamic cluster to be associated with machines running across multiple server instances to really separate the load out and really provide some level of isolation. I'll enable the dynamic cluster create uh, its own unique listen port. So this is particularly important when I'm running multiple managed server instances that are dynamically created on the same uh, piece of hardware so I don't get physical port collisions. And then the final thing we'll do is we'll finish off. So here we can see now the details of my Elastic Cluster. If I click into it, we can see that um, if we look particularly under servers, that it's configured with a dynamic cluster size of two, a max dynamic cluster size of eight, etc. One of the things I am gonna change just for the purpose of this demo is to change the cool off period. So this is a period that's specified in seconds that determines or controls and gates how the scale up and scale down operations are. So we don't get into a constant state of making you know, incremental adjustments. This will provide a period of time by which the server won't make any changes to the scale up or scale down number. I'm just gonna set that to 15 for this demonstration to make it uh, more realistic. We don't wanna wait for 900 seconds to make a change. If we look down at the servers, you can see that two servers have been created for me, Elastic Cluster 1 and Elastic Cluster 2. What we'll then do is we'll go ahead and we'll start those servers. So we'll go back to the main page, go to control, and we'll ask for those servers to be started. If we click the refresh button on the console, we can see the updates of those servers as they occur. We can also view the state of the servers by clicking through into the server node of the WebLogic console. And here we can see that the two servers associated with the Elastic Cluster are now up and running. We can also see their listen board, their health, etc. So what I'd like to now do is perform an action from WebLogic, the WebLogic scripting tool, WST, to automatically scale up my cluster. So let's switch into WST now. All right, and the first thing we'll do is we'll connect. All right, so here I am, I've connected to my administration server. The command I can use to help me 
scale my cluster up is called scale up. So if we use help for that, we can see that scale up is an operation that takes the name of the cluster, the number of servers I wish to increase it by, and then some optionals that define whether I want to update the configuration, whether I want to make this a blocking operation, etc. So what we should see here now is as I execute the scale up operation on my Elastic Cluster cluster, um, we should see the number of managed servers automatically created to increase it by the amount specified and started. So in effect, we've elastically scaled the cluster up with by uh, invoking a WST operation. So if we execute scale up, the name of the cluster was Elastic Cluster. We'll say we want to scale it up by four and I want to update the configuration. So that's going to go ahead now and perform the underlying operations to create those managed server instances in my dynamic cluster, automatically start them, and therefore have applied some elastic scaling to that cluster. As we can see, the managed servers have been created, so the scale-up operation has completed. And we're now in the process of waiting for four additional new servers to reach the running state. Let's take a look at what that looks like in the console. We kick back into clusters, we click into elastic clusters. We scroll down, we can see now that we have six managed servers within my cluster. If we look at the server page, we can see that they are all now running. So in effect, my cluster has scaled up elastically to provide additional workload support. We look back in WST and we can see that the outcome of the operation was a success. All servers are now running. Of course, through the use of the various plugins we provide for WebLogic to sit within uh, Apache or Oracle HTTP server, there is an option on the plugin to support this dynamic server list. So as these servers have been added, they will automatically be picked up through the front end HTTP server and able to be used to accept uh, requests that are coming in from clients. So distributing the workload across all of the servers that represent this elastic cluster. All right, so as a final part of the demonstration, we will now scale down the cluster. So my workload has increased significantly. Um, I've scaled up my cluster to support the workload. I'm now at a point where I wanna scale it back down to its normal state. So let's bring it back down now so we only have two servers running again. So we can execute that using a scale down operation. Again, passing in the name of the cluster. And if we look back here on the WebLogic Administration Console page, we'll see the uh, number of managed servers now begin to stop in accordance with that scale down operation that was issued. So there we can see already that Elastic Cluster 3, 4, 5 and 6 are now no longer reachable and are in a shutdown state. So under the covers, my, my uh, cluster has scaled up and has now been scaled back down. Here we can see the outcome from the WST operation. In this case, it's a success. So there we have it, uh, a quick video that demonstrates the new elastic scalability model we have introduced in WebLogic Server 1221. By creating a dynamic cluster, we can uh, invoke operations from WST to automatically scale the cluster up by adding additional managed servers and starting them. And similarly, once we decide we can scale the cluster back down, we can issue a scale down command and the WebLogic administration server will take care of uh, shutting some of those servers down in order to meet the requested uh, scaling factor. Okay, I hope you got something out of this and uh, look forward to the next part where we'll use some of the automated policy mechanisms to scale the clusters up and down. Mm -hmm.